In this video, you'll learn two different techniques you can use to perform keyword research and find lucrative keywords for your SEO campaigns. Before we get into the details, it's important to understand what we want to achieve with keyword research, and this can be summarized into three main goals. The first goal is to find keywords that can potentially bring you traffic. Trying to rank for keywords that won't generate website visits is a waste of time and resources. The second goal is to find keywords that can increase your conversions. In other words, keywords aligned with your business goals to generate sales, leads, or affiliate earnings. The third goal is to find keywords you can actually rank for. The web is a saturated place, and unfortunately, it's impossible to rank for all the keywords you want. Here is a quick overview of the two methods. The first method is to follow the top-down approach. Using this method, you think of general topics that might be relevant to your business. Then, using different techniques, you can identify which keywords to use in your campaigns. This is more suitable for new websites or blogs that don't have a lot of content. The second method is to use a competitor's website as the starting point of your research. With the help of tools, you can reveal lucrative keywords for your business. This method is handy when running out of ideas or not sure what keywords to target. I'm using both methods when doing keyword research for my website, and in this video, I will show you how each method works. Let's get started with the first method, the top-down approach. This is the traditional way of doing keyword research. The process involves several steps to transform your general ideas into keywords that meet our set criteria, i.e. with traffic potential, aligned with our business objectives, and realistic. Step 1. Get to know your niche. The first step is to find out as many details as possible about your niche. Knowing who you have to compete with and what content is already ranking in Google will help you create a realistic keyword list and SEO strategy. Go to Google and start typing general terms related to your niche. Visit all websites that come up on the first page of Google and take note of things like The Domain Authority the domain authority is a score between 0 to 100 that tries to predict how well a website will rank on search engines. You can use tools like SEMrush, Arefs, or Moz to find a website's domain score. The higher the score, the more authoritative a website is. Visit the website and examine their content. Take note of things like the type and length of content and their publishing frequency. Use the site operator to find out how many pages they have in Google's index. This will give you an indication of how big a website is. Keep this information in a notebook or spreadsheet, and we'll use it later in the process. Step 2. Write down topic ideas and create topic buckets. In a notebook or spreadsheet, write down anything that comes to mind related to your niche, industry, and products. Put yourself in the Google searcher position and try to think about what search terms they might type in Google. If needed, revisit the website noted in Step 1 and take a closer look at their page titles. This can give you more ideas about topics related to your niche that you might not have thought about. Group your ideas to form topic buckets. Each topic bucket should include related ideas. Let me give you an example of how this works. Let's say that you are in the digital marketing niche and want to find keywords that can potentially help you get clients for your digital marketing agency. Your target market is small businesses and startups looking for different kinds of services related to digital marketing. Your topic buckets might include the following. General information bucket. This bucket includes ideas related to general questions about digital marketing. Small business bucket. This bucket includes search terms that a small business owner might use in Google when looking for digital marketing agencies. Services bucket. This bucket includes search terms related to specific marketing services like SEO and social media marketing. If this is the first time you're doing keyword research for your website, 
you may end up having many topic buckets. This is perfectly fine. Remember that this is an ongoing process and not something you have to complete 100% on the first go. To begin with, write your basic ideas and move on to the next step. Step 3. Find seed keywords using keyword research tools. Now that you have a list of ideas grouped into topic buckets, it's time to convert your ideas into SEO keywords. SEO keywords are the actual queries people type in a search engine that are important for your website. To do that, we need the help of keyword research tools. I will demonstrate the process using SEMrush, but you can use your favorite tool to go through the process. If you don't have a SEMrush subscription, you can take advantage of our exclusive offer and get a 30-day free subscription to SEMrush Pro. Log in to SEMrush and go to the Keyword Magic tool. Take your first topic bucket and start your analysis. Go through the list and select all keywords related to your business and click the Add to Keyword Manager button. At this stage, we don't care about the monthly search volume or keyword difficulty, but to select the most relevant keywords for our website. Repeat the process to analyze at least 10 ideas from your topic buckets. When you finish adding keywords to your list, you go to Keyword Manager to view your selected keywords. Click the Update Metrics button to refresh the metrics and sort the keywords by volume. Step 4. Examine the search intent of each keyword. Now that you have a list of seed keywords, it's time to examine each keyword's search intent. The search intent is simply the type of information users are looking for when they perform a search. For some keywords, the search intent is obvious, but for others, it needs more investigation. For example, when searching for SEO packages for small businesses, their intent is clear, but searching for SEO is very vague. The best way to figure out the search intent of a keyword is to type the keywords in Google and examine the first page of the results. Google is doing a great job in understanding the user's actual intent, so what they show on the first page is very close to what users are looking for. You need to do this exercise to find and eliminate from your list keywords that have a different intent than what you are offering. You don't want to waste your time targeting keywords that won't get you the right type of traffic. For example, I initially added the keyword freelance digital marketing to my list. When you search for this keyword on Google, you will see that most of the results are resources on how to become a freelancer. Since my goal is to find keywords to get clients, this keyword is not a good fit. The intent of the searcher is not to hire a freelancer, but to learn how to become one. Step 5. Find long tail keywords. As you work through the list of your seed keywords, you will realize that most of them are highly competitive. In other words, when you search for these keywords on Google, you'll find hundreds of websites competing for one of the top positions. If you have an established website with a high domain score, this may not be a very big issue, but if you are starting out now, this is a huge problem. So, what you should do instead is to adjust your keyword research strategy and start looking for keywords that are less competitive, i.e., long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are search queries usually consisting of two or more words that narrow down the focus of the search results. Long tail keywords make up 70% of all searches and it's your only opportunity to start ranking high on Google for keywords that can bring targeted traffic to your website. The fastest way to find long tail keywords is to use two SEMrush tools, the Keyword Magic tool and the Top Research tools. Revisit the Keyword Magic tool. Enter your most general keyword and use the advanced filters to find keywords with five words or more. Just enter the number 5 into the Words Count box and click Apply. What you see now are keywords that consist of more than 5 words. Select the keywords that match your business, examine their search intent by analyzing the Google results, 
and add them to your main list. Another way to find long tail keywords is to use the topic research tool. Select the topic research option from the menu, type your topic ideas, and click Get Content Ideas. Look for the Interesting Questions section and find questions related to your business and products. Step 6. Choose the right keywords for your website. Once you reach this point, you should already have a list of keywords that includes both seed and long tail keywords you would like to rank for. For sure, it's a big list and not easily manageable. Now it's time to revise the list once more and narrow it down to 20 to 30 keywords you can target by creating SEO optimized landing pages, optimizing your home page, or creating new pages. Visit Keyword Manager and go through the keywords one by one and decide whether to keep them or remove them from your list. Ask yourself the following questions. Is the keyword search intent in sync with your marketing goals? If your goal is to get new clients, your priority should be keywords with a buying search intent and not informational. Is the keyword difficulty low compared to other keywords? Keyword difficulty is an estimate of how difficult it is to rank well in Google organic search for that keyword. Each tool has its own way of calculating keyword difficulty, but in general, the lower the value, the better. Click on the KD column to sort your keywords by difficulty. Does Google rank normal websites in the first 10 positions, or is it only big and high authoritative websites? If that's the case, remove the keyword from your list. Is there enough monthly search volume for that keyword? Check the monthly search volume in SEMrush and keep it if it's above 50. Can you provide good content for that keyword? To achieve good rankings for any keyword, you should provide content that will keep users happy. Go back to Google and carefully examine the content of the first pages. Can you come up with something better or different than what is already available? If not, remove the keyword from your list. Remember that the goal of keyword research is not to create a long list of keywords, but a manageable list with vetted keywords you can actually use in your content marketing and SEO campaigns. Method 2. Competitor Analysis You can use this method to spy on your competitors and find out how much traffic they get from Google and for which keywords. It's a great way to find new keywords to target in your blog posts when you're running out of ideas. For this method, you'll need the help of a good keyword research tool. I will demonstrate the process using SEMrush, but you can also use any other tool, like Arif's or Ubersuggest. Let's assume that you have a website selling dog food and you want to find keywords for your content marketing campaigns. The keywords should satisfy our set criteria, i.e., keywords with a decent monthly search volume. Any number above 50 is good. Keywords with a buying search intent. In other words, people searching to buy dog food and not looking for general information. Keywords that a small and relatively new website can actually rank for. The dog food niche is very saturated, but as you'll see with the right approach, you can find great keywords that can potentially get you good rankings. The first step is to identify your competitors. This is the same as step one of the previous method. You need to go to Google and search for keywords related to your niche and examine the website's ranking on the top positions of the results. The second step is to find out for which keywords a competitor is ranking. To do that, go to SEMrush, select Domain Overview, and type in a domain. Take a look at the Domain Authority Score, Estimated Search Traffic, and Referring Domains. This will give you a quick hint of how authoritative a website is. Scroll down to Organic Research. You can see at a glance their top keywords. These are the keywords they rank on the first page of Google with the associated monthly search volume. Click the View Details button to view more keywords. What you see in the table is a breakdown of all the keywords the particular domain is ranking. For each keyword, you can see the ranking position, 
search volume, keyword difficulty, and other valuable information. You can use the filters on top to filter the data based on the position, search volume, or particular terms. For now, we are interested in finding out their top pages, so click Pages from the top menu. As you can see, the particular website has a number of pages ranking for hundreds of keywords related to dog food. Go through the list of pages and try to find pages that refer to a specific topic. Avoid general terms, but concentrate on long tail variations. The sensitive stomach page seems like a good candidate for further investigation. It receives a good amount of traffic and ranks for more than a thousand keywords. Click on the page to view all keywords the page is ranking. You'll notice that the page has top rankings for various long tail keywords related to dog food for sensitive stomach, including phrases with words like best, puppy, and skin. Now it's time to go back to Google and see what kind of results it shows for some of these keywords. Let's start with best dog food for sensitive stomach. You'll notice that all 10 entries on the first page of the results have similar titles. They all include the word best in the title and their content is a list of dog food products. If you take each of these pages and analyze their domain authority, you'll see that all domains have a high domain score. This means that creating a post about the best dog food for sensitive stomach is unlikely to get you any rankings or traffic. What you should do is to look for alternatives, and the People Also Ask section of the search results is a great starting point. Looking at the suggested questions, a good candidate for further investigation is the what is the best dog food for dogs with digestive problems. It's a phrase closely related to sensitive stomach, but with different wording. Click on the drop-down and then click on the Search For option to view the search results for that term. Interestingly, if you take a closer look, you'll notice that the search results are almost identical to the best dog food for sensitive stomach. This is a very good sign that a properly optimized post with the title Best Dog Food for Dogs with Digestive Problems will do well on Google. To confirm that this is a good phrase to target, go back to the Keyword Magic tool and type Dog Food Digestive Problems. You'll notice that the particular phrase has a decent search volume and several highly related long tail terms that are perfect candidates for article subheadings. In practice, this means that if you create a pillar article around that topic, you can potentially rank high for a number of long tail variations and gain highly targeted traffic to your website. Based on the information we've gathered so far, you can translate that into an article with the title Best Dog Food for Dogs with Digestive Problems. The page URL will include the main seed keyword, i.e., best dog food for sensitive stomach. The article can have the following headings. What should senior dogs with digestive problems eat? Wet food for dogs with digestive problems. Within your article, you can include naturally in your content other relevant keywords from the list. That's how you can find keywords to use in your campaigns. You can now repeat both processes to create a list of all the keywords you would like to rank for.